guys of Minnesota sports flowing in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. Write this down. Write it down. You like writing things down. Write that down. I don't have a pencil. Well, remember that. Then. Write them down. It's like a, like a personal contract with ourselves. Welcome in to the OG version of Write That Down Here on Minnesota Sports with Mackie and Judd and the Score North YouTube channel. The only show in America dumb enough to put statistics next to our predictions, unlike all those other talking heads out there that want you to forget when they're wrong. We highlight when we are wrong, as you'll see on the accountability session here coming up. But boys, before we get into how this works and our predictions for the week, the Twins are back in town here. So they play, uh, they do play a day game in Milwaukee today, but then the home opener is tomorrow, Thursday at Target Field, 3.10 p.m. against the Gardos, the Cleveland Gardos. First 10,000 fans through the gates get an opening weekend beanie. You get to see Byron Buxton flying around center field. Pablo Lopez slated to start that game. You'll see Declan Goff roaming around the ballpark. Very exciting. Twins.com slash tickets. Twins.com slash tickets. Very right, excited. Boy. So we end at first, it looked like the forecast was that it was going to be great as of last week. And then on Monday, I was like, oh, this might be chilly. And now it looks like it's still going to be OK. This this weekend should be a little bit warmer and better. Uh, so that that's good signs. Very good signs. Also, stay tuned on the Score North social channels. AJ and Ross reviewed the food at Target Field. AJ had so many hot takes on these food on the food that we might have to bring him on the twin show to explain more. Let's just say the baked potato option in the Legends Club. You're going to want to see AJ's review of that. Okay. I'll leave it at that. Is that going out today on Score Social? Yeah, should be today or tomorrow morning at the latest. But yes, I think today. So It's always very exciting when they unveil the new foods at Target Field. So yeah, keep an eye out. Score North Social. By the way, we launched a new Score North Twin Show YouTube channel a few weeks ago. It's just the Score North Twin Show on YouTube. You can find links to it by just... uh, if you just type it into the YouTube search bar or if you go to Purple Daily or the Score North YouTube channel, you'll see on those homepages a place to find it. So here's how this works. Three predictions from everybody each week. They must be quantifiable. Those are really the only rules. We keep track of batting averages and home runs here on Write That Down. And listeners, if you want to be like Eric and make predictions as a guest listener participant, you can send Declan a message through the Score North app and we will get you scheduled so all right boys let's do the accountability starting with you judd oh wow okay okay judd okay Okay. got a lot lot to cover here with judd yeah good 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 we'll start with the bad you said the twins would steal two or more bases on opening day they stole none if i recall correctly no they should steal more bases that buxton out there at this point in time you you should run yes got that prolific base dealer carlos correa Rob Manfred wants you to run. Run. Be free. Be free. The bases are bigger. The The pitchers have constraints as to how many times they can throw over. Exactly. Pablo Lopez will strike out at least eight Royals hitters on opening day. Oh. He stopped at seven. Oof. That's too bad. I feel good about that, though. Like, I, I was tracking correctly. I've been you slumping, did. so I, I feel good about my tracking of that one. Yeah. You did, however, say go for hockey will not make the Frozen Four. And that Royce Lewis would hit a home run in the opener against the Royals. That's a home run. Boy, did I get under the wire on that one. Now, you you were guilty of duplicating your prediction on that because like two weeks before, three weeks before, you said oh. Royce Lewis will homer in the Twins' first game of the season. Well, that's, that's, they're both correct. I'd like to see them both in green. <laughs> and the, yeah, the rules are if we catch you making a duplicate yeah, prediction, then we have to. We can only count one of them. I, try. I would never do that. That's an that's a mistake on my part, by the way. I would never do that on purpose. And this one has to stay on the board for now, but you're tracking here. You said two years ago, Mark Laurie and Alex Rodriguez would back out or not complete their purchase of the Timberwolves. They would not become majority owners. And we're on track for that. But yeah, yes, right you're now right. You're, it's in the, the right. We, we, need the, we need finality. I believe... It sounds like the uh, the board of the NBA board of governors meeting is on April 9th. Okay. And there might there might even be some finality then, or there oh, could just okay. be like months of, because because I think if the NBA board of governors comes in and says you know whether the paperwork was submitted or not we don't care, right? It's a no. 
Right. right? I think I think they could do that next would, week if they wanted to. Would the arbitrator then be out of the process? Like, can can they do or would? I that's a, I don't that's know a question for sure. I don't know. I think the NBA can come in at any point and, and basically be like, uh, yeah, we're not cool with these guys. So okay. get them out of here. Okay. Well, I hope I, do, I don't right know for them. sure what's going to happen, though. For my right yeah. to them. All right. Okay. Nice. A few a few for me here. We'll start with the bad. Pablo Lopez will strike out the first batter he faces. He did not. I said last year, Byron Buxton will not play in the outfield again in the 2023 season. Correct. Nor would he play in a game in a regular a regular season game in the outfield in March or April of 2024. No faith by me. No faith. How could you? I told you guys, however, that Purdue would make it despite all of their recent failures in the NCAA tournament, that they would get to the Elite Eight, and they did, and even further. And it took the third tiebreaker over OKC to make this happen, but I said the Wolves would be in sole possession of first place in the West again at some point this year. Uh, Record-wise, they were tied with OKC, but the third... And and by the way, the first tiebreaker is head-to-head, which they're two and two against each other. And then... What was the second time? The second tiebreaker was, are you winning your division? Well, they're both in the same division. Okay. So the third tiebreaker is division record. And the Wolves were, at the time of them being tied, the Wolves were 12-3 and three in division. OKC was 12-4. and four. So by a half game in the third tiebreaker. Congratulations. That's I a lot of work to <laughs> just deduct that to, get, to give yourself a point. Worth it. 100% worth it. All right. Listeners, Nate said the Wolves will finish as a top six team in the West. They clinched that last night. Very nice. They cannot fall out of the top six. Declan, strap in. Busy week for Declan here. Yeah. We'll start with the bad. Declan said the Twins would blow a save opportunity in Kansas City. Don't score runs on Saturday or Sunday, and that won't won't happen. You said Byron Buxton would hit his first home run of the season, or would hit the first home run of the season for the Twins. Yeah, They have won. Royce Lewis, first inning opening day. They have not homered since. You said the Twins would trade at least one of these players by opening day, Kirloff, Julian, or Walner. And you had an opening day parlay of Carlos uh, Carlos Santana batting leadoff, Royce Lewis batting fourth, Kirloff, Walner, Julian not in the starting lineup. Not even close, yeah. But you did say the Wolves would go exactly six and two in their final eight nice. games to end the month of March, which is a home run. Okay. Nice. You needed that that Bulls collapse on March thirty first. Hey, thank you for losing. To make it happen. Appreciate it. And you said Josh Stalmont would not be on the twenty six man opening day roster. He is not. He's on the injured list. He's not on the twenty six. So uh, not bad in the end. Listeners, right now off to a hot start. A five hundred average on the season. I'm at 353, Declan 350, Judd at 278. Declan leads with two home runs. Judd and I each have one home run. Listeners still in search of their first. Career stats dating back several years, back to 2018. Declan, a 360 career average. Judd, 326. I'm at 273. Listeners, 264. Judd with 313 career hits. Listeners with 55 career home runs. Lead those categories. So, woo! That's a lot right there. <sighs> A lot of stuff there. Let's bring him in. Let's bring Eric, the guest listener predictor. Good morning. Eric, what's going on, man? What are you up to today? Uh, Just working right now. So I'm I'm coming out to the the car office to do a quick call. Okay. So uh, (laughs) when did you become a Minnesota sports fan? What's your what's your backstory? So, uh, so I was born and raised up in in Minneapolis area, kind of all over Western suburbs. Um, so being a Vikings fan, everything since I can remember and, uh, kind of a funny story. My parents were still going to Vikings games when my mom was pregnant. And that was kind of the only time that I would do somersaults. So the way I look at it, I was a Vikings fan even before I was born. <laughs> Topsy turvy, man. Started yep. in the womb. Topsy turvy. Yep. <laughs> Just like, I can't even watch this mom. I'm going to go somersault. The nervous twitching <laughs> yeah. started before yep. you exited the womb. Yep. It's crazy, man. Yep. So. <laughs> It's been a struggle ever since. Yeah, <laughs> true. Well, you're going to make three predictions here today. You can uh, pretty much do whatever you want. Just make sure they're quantifiable. 
And uh, we'll start with you, Eric, over to Judd, Declan, and then I'll round it out. We'll make three trips around the room, if that's good with you, man. Write this down. Sounds good. I've got all, right. uh, all Vikings picks up there. Nice. Um, okay. Board here. So first one, we're going to go with uh, the Vikings move up to get the QB they want. Um, don't know where yet, but uh, after that, all next four picks are going to be defense. Okay, wait. So the Vikings are gonna. You're saying it's a parlay. Vikings are gonna move up for a quarterback, and then the ne- their next four picks will be defensive players. Yep. Interesting. It makes sense. Yeah, though. cornerback for sure. Defensive tackle. Yep. They're gonna Flores get uh, KOC, his guy, and then Flores needs needs some help. Yeah. Flores is gonna be like, "Come on now, bring yep. it on!" Yep. Just like free agency. <laughs> exactly. Bring it on. Eric, do you have oh, just off the record, of course? Here, do you sure. have? a quarterback that you particularly want the Vikings to move up for? Oh man. You know, right now I'm, I'm thinking may, but there's a piece of me that's right there with McCarthy too. Yeah. So uh, here's my question for everyone. If Thor Nystrom hadn't pounded on the table on purple daily, like two months ago and said, everyone is getting this wrong. By the end of this process, JJ McCarthy is going to be a top five pick. He's way better than people think. He Thor shaped my Thor made it okay in my mind for the Vikings to move up for I would have called that desperate two months ago. Now I'm like, whatever, cool, yep. I guess. So we'll see. Yep. Well, it was weird too because Thor did that on a Thor's day, and it felt like within the next like four days, it just went like wildfire, and other people were yep. you know, credible draft experts were basically echoing the same exact thing. Like like the secret club. It's like Thor. It's like Thor is like he pulled back the, the curtain. Is. Yeah, here's what the knock is, and it's like we learned knock, and it's like yeah, let's go, JJ McCarthy. <laughs> A secret password to get into the uh, JJ yeah. McCarthy yeah. club. Write that down. Mason Blue. <laughs> Jeb, what's your first prediction? All right, I'm going to go with the twin home opener prediction for uh, two or for for just to be clear for the home opener, just in case it starts to hail on Thursday and we have to kind of plan Friday. Carlos Correa will have at least two hits, and the Twins will beat the Guardians in their home opener. Okay. Guardians have been hot. Gar- they're, mm-hmm. they're they're off to, to a good start. They beat up on the Mar- or they beat the Mariners last night. Uh, but with Pablo pitching, and I think Correa has a couple of hits. I think the Twins win that game. I think that's enough because you're saying multiple hits for one specific player. Two hits. You're you're saying a win. a win. Yeah, and a win. I think that's a home run if, if mm-hmm. all of that happens. I think so, okay. too. Write that down. The Dexter. All right, write this down. Uh, Judd alluded to the fact the Twins have yet to hit a home run since opening day. Now they do play the Brewers. They're about to square off in about 20 minutes from the time we're recording as of this second. But You're going to steal this from me, aren't you? On the home opener, oh. the Twins will hit multiple home runs. Okay. okay. They will hit multiple home runs on the home opener against the guys. I don't know what will happen against the Brewer crew. Couldn't I do. the sheriff's on them. But, yeah. Yeah. You, you didn't Here quite steal my prediction, but I'm, I'm getting this in right under the wire. This probably gets posted as the first pitch You're is fine. being thrown. Yeah, You're fine. So you guys can confirm. I'm, I'm going to make a prediction about today's Brewers game. 11.48 yep. right now. Yep, you're good. Yep. So you're good. They will hit multiple home runs in today's game against the Brewers. Now, are either one of these, I, I think... I mean, they've had they have won so far in three games, small sample size. Is this a home run for either one of us? I mean, it's not like it's not that uncommon like to hit two more, home runs I, in a game. I feel like we need more specifics. I feel like yeah. if you were to give, I think like, if like, you, oh, if I gave you off, one of the one of the players, yeah, that's you'd have, hit a we'd home have run. to give. I mean, at, in, in, in the theory, lineup? I we have twenty seven tries at this. You know, yeah, at like, least. and they've hit. They've they had a season where they. But hit if you want to offer up names, a game, I ain't gonna stop you. And that's or, a home run. or a scenario. You know. First inning or you know, grand slam. <laughs> There's got to be a quantifiable thing, I think. For it to be I'm just trying. I'm trying to find their lineup for today. Oh, I have it. Here we go. Yeah. Do you have it? Yep, I have it for you. So let's. Uh, Julian leading off. Kirloff batting second. Buxton third. Kepler fourth. Buxton. Buxton gets one. And Buxton. Gets Multiple home runs. runs and Buxton Buck? and and the buck the buck truck. The buck truck. As long as he does not get trucked by a sausage again today, I'll be happy. <laughs> I should say gets at least one. I don't want to get smoked you. by the write that down. Okay. by the write that down um, semantics gods. Okay, back to Eric for his second prediction. Cool. All right. So number two, uh, I've got Vikings beating the Falcons this year, and 
they will sack Kirk at least three times. So his average per game is two. And I think we get to him at least one over his average. This is a touchdown because it's a it's an outcome, and That's then he's perfect. actually yeah he's he's kind of hard to sack despite his immobility. Yep, he doesn't take a ton of sacks. He'll get Gosh. rid of it quick. So we'll we'll see. I'm hoping it'll yep. be a blitz off the edge, and they'll blow him up. I I hope so. And they'll go for the ribs too. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there, Thea. Hypothetically, you guys just can't move on. You guys, nope. you got Judd and Eric. Just I mean, can't, we're, we're, can't freaking let it go. Eric and I are <laughs> scheming how the Vikings are going to win a game. Since when is it a crime Paul to Kirk, help? He's the coming team. off, coming off a major injury. He's got a family. Okay, he's been rejected My by family? this team. He, uh, he wanted to go yeah. play back with the Vikings. They told Actually, him they you know broke up with him. High low. <laughs> oh God. Oh. Farvinian God. high low. Hey, the Saints did it. I love the Augusta Green yet on an Easter Sunday. I love the Augusta with Green. kids, the kids yeah, on the porch good. in Atlanta. It's like they've lived there their whole lives. Every yeah. photo that his family poses in, it look it looks like those stock photos that you see when you go to like Target or Walmart in the frames. Yeah. Or it's like this, per, like everyone's got perfect white teeth. It's the perfect family. Their blue yep. eyes or whatever. It's the perfect yeah. family. <laughs> <laughs> which, which of course, starts a horror film of epic proportions. Yeah, have you ever seen Amityville? Yeah. Yeah, just be careful out there. Just write that down. I think we're back to Judd here. Yeah, we are. We are. All right, write this down. Um, Ronell Blanco. <laughs> Ronell Blanco, who, throw, who threw the no-no on Monday against the Blue Jays for the Astros. Mm -hmm. He will be sent to the minors or <laughs> jettisoned in some way during the season. By the this Astros. is a great prediction. He might return at some point, okay? So I'm not saying that, that he's like going to be outright cut, but he is going to be – he is in, in the rotation because Verlander and I think somebody else are both out, and this is like a typical April no-hitter. Yeah. Oh, man, what a great story. And then in three months, he's going to be in AAA or something. So he will be sent to the minors or jettisoned in some way, just to cover my bases here, um, during the season. I'm sure someone has this, like Jeff Passan or somebody. We need a list of the most random players to throw no hitters. Like Phil Umber threw yeah, one one time, and that was like the end of his career, basically. Yep. Dallas Braden, he had that epic one on Mother's Day. Yep, is that a perfect game? He might have. He might I have thrown a perfect, perfect game. game. I think yeah, perfect right. game. And his mom had died of breast cancer, I believe, and his mm -hmm. grandma had raised him, and it was a great story. And then, yeah, Dex is right. I I think he got hurt. Yeah, I think he was very. He, I think Braden was a very highly touted young arm at one point with yep. injuries but yeah this dude's like 30 yeah he's up right to be gone okay Declan back to you all right right this down. also a minor league ask prediction from me here Royce Lewis will play in a minor league game before June 1st that would be, be great at, news yeah be really good news also I'm gonna cover my basis he'll play in a game I don't really see a scenario where they don't give him a minor league rehab assignment but just in the craziness that he just goes right to the big leagues which i don't think will happen no, i don't want to get burned but so covering my ass here game. i'm covering my butt so sure. play in a minor league or major league baseball game before june 1st so yep. you're saying like if he goes to fort myers and rehabs there and plays on some backfield games and for some it's like, got to be, be, a be an, game. an official league. it can't league be like right. a yeah it can't be like a Saints, simulated game or something you know, okay. wichita yeah if he goes and plays for the golf, like is it like the Gulf Coast League or whatever it's called, the yep. the the A ball team, that would count as long as yep. it's an official, official game. Yep. professional baseball game. Gotcha. Write that down. Okay, write this down. I guess the theme of my first two predictions is teams or players breaking slumps. So I've got the Twins hitting home runs, and the Wolves play a back to back. Anthony Edwards hasn't hit a three pointer in a week. He's over his last twenty three point attempts. Write this down. The Ant Man will make at least three three pointers tonight. I think that I think that's around his average, so it's probably not a. I'm guessing this probably isn't a um, a home run prediction, so I'm just I'll just throw it out as a at least three. nice yeah. solid knock. He'll knock down at least three three pointers tonight. Write that down. So sure. okay, back to Eric for your third and final prediction, sir. Cool. Uh, third one. I've got 2025 season vikings will win the nfc north 2025 okay yep. so i think we got a, a stinker yep. year coming up which is fine get all the pieces in place and then 2025 we're gonna start firing 
I yeah, twenty twenty five is you know, some some nice cap space. Although if they bring back Jefferson, there's not going to be as much cap space. But they've got a nice yeah. cap situation. They might have a, a quarterback going into his second year. You know, yep. and you could actually if if you if you do do the multi year contract with Justin Jefferson, you, you could actually clear like take cap hits beyond twenty five mm-hmm. and create more room in twenty five. I'm I'm with you if they get if they get the quarterback right. Yep. I think 25 is ripe to be a really good year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. So, Eric, since you've got this life-changing platform right now, is there anyone you'd like to thank that helped you get to this pinnacle moment? Um, well, my family, you know, my wife and, and kids and wife putting up with uh, all the Vikings games and Timberwolves games now every, you know, couple nights. And, uh, my parents for getting me into Minnesota sports and and toughen it out after all these years awesome man well great work with your predictions here we appreciate you taking some time out of your work day to hang out with us absolutely and get uh, hopefully back we inside can do it and again. get to work before the yeah. boss finds out <laughs> right yeah i gonna sneak back in boss is like where's that damn eric <laughs> always looking for him spewing yeah. vikings takes on yeah, the dumb it. podcast in bears land so yep. yeah awesome man that. all right eric take That's care right. dude we'll hopefully yes. see you again sometime yep all right, bye. So there he is. Um, let's make our final three predictions here, boys. Judd, what do you got? All right, I am uh, going to pivot to a wild prediction. Oh, well. Ryan Hartman has been suspended for three games, served the first of a three-game suspension because he threw a stick like a javelin towards an official on Saturday out of frustration. <laughs> um, but but what this means is Ryan Hartman... I love Hart- how that's a three-game suspension only in hockey. He's well, and there was, throwing and a there was great him. debate about how could they suspend him? That was a terrible call. It's like because you don't get to throw your <laughs> stick, stick at stick a human a being. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and he almost hit, hit Boldy right in the freaking face because he was going up the tunnel, came back on, and literally javelined it across the ice. Anyway, Ryan Hartman will score a goal on Sunday in his first game back against the Blackhawks. This is a typical hockey, I'm sorry, I'm going to show you how valuable I can be. Blackhawks, of course, suck. Hartman was once a first-round draft pick of the of the Blackhawks. He will score a goal, at least a goal, just to cover my bases. He will score at least a goal on Sunday. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Write it down. You like don't throw things down. Don't throw weapons at officials. Yeah. Geez. That's the lesson we're learning Just here. Stupid. All right. Last one from me here. WrestleMania prediction. I I think I have a couple. Maybe I know I have the Jason Kelsey one, which by the way is trending towards probably coming off the board correctly for me. They reached right. out to him about being involved. And my, I believe the spirit of my prediction was he'll get in the ring and do something. Yes. Okay. So yep. that is trending and, and good news for for, for me. But another write that down prediction. The money in the bank contract will be cashed in at WrestleMania or on the Raw after WrestleMania. Damian Priest has had the briefcase for months now. And I think Mm -hmm. my sense tells me they're going to spoil Drew McIntyre's WrestleMania win, who has a great little storyline going. I love what they're doing with Drew. But I think they're gonna he's gonna win the title, will have his moment, and then it'll just be squashed, squashed by the judgment day. And then Damian Priest takes that title off him seconds later at WrestleMania. That's my thinking, but I think it also could happen on Raw afterwards too. Right. We down. need this to happen in real sports. You know, money in the bank. Mm-hmm. Where oh man, congratulations. You got the the Denver Nuggets are hoisting the Larry O'Brien trophy. Confetti is falling. And and you've got Adam Silver up on the stage, and all of a sudden, wait a second, wait a second, that's the that's Lakers, the Timberwolves, that's the, that's the <laughs> Lakers, the Heat, the Heat are here, Jimmy Butler. It's one, it's one game, it's one overtime period. That's all you get. You cash it in, you get one overtime period for the title. Same thing. No. With, same thing with trade deadlines. I don't I, look. Woj and Shams, you can't report all of them. And then what if all of a sudden just LeBron James is on the Knicks one night? He's just there for introductions, just like the Royal Rumble. It'd be great. It'd be great. It'd be hilarious, man. Wait a second. Wait a second. Okay, my final prediction. Write it down. You like writing things down. UConn beats Iowa in the women's final four. And to make this, because it's it's a two and a half point spread, so that's not a that's not a home run. And Paige Beckers will have a higher field goal percentage in the game than Caitlin Clark. 
Ooh. Now she has a higher on the right. season, so it's not wouldn't be like. But right. I think everyone's talking about Caitlin Clark, this historical run, and that's great, and she's the best player, yada yada. But Paige Becker's. Let's not forget a few years ago, this was supposed to be Paige Becker's stage. Okay, mm-hmm. and she's going to show everyone. So UConn over Iowa with Paige Becker's having a high a higher field goal percentage than Caitlin Clark in the that's game. That's a home run. Yep. Okay, write it down. Write this down. There we go, boys. All right, we got to get this posted so Declan can watch uh, multiple home runs being hit by the Twins against the Brewers here. We got to get it posted so you're not called a fraud by people who are like, (laughs) "Why am I? Why did the Twins just hit two home runs?" And this fraud is telling me they're going to hit two home runs. Yep, yep. And uh, yeah, keep an eye on the Scorner Twin Show podcast feed and YouTube channel for the main episodes Tuesdays with Trevor Plouffe yesterday and Declan hosting extra innings also. So all sorts of Twins content coming at you. Flagrant Howls, we just posted. In episode two, recapping the uh, fun game last night against the Rockets. So uh, it's it's a busy, busy time here at Score North across all of our podcasts. We'll see you guys tomorrow.